In this video, I'm going to show you how to get some test content for the OpenAPI GPT-3 uh, library. Uh, this is to use the playground. It's kind of a clickbait title, but the, but the goal is uh, a couple months ago, yes, it was May, and I'm now in January. Last May, OpenAPI GPT-3 came out, um, you know, introduced its open beta. I, you know, I was playing around with it. I want to kind of understand how I could use this. And one of the things I wanted to try out was thinking if there was a way to automatically create tweets based on existing tweets. And so one of the things I did was I built a pretty simple program for fetching um, a user's or a series of user's tweets, um, and then it formats it slightly so that it could be plugged into the playground of the Open API GPT-3 uh, library. So this is all done in Python. Um, if you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on the Open API library, uh, this is not it. This, this is just about creating that basic um, that basic script for fetching uh, Twitter data. So it's kind of a, a clickbait title, so just get fair warning. Um, if you look at my screen right now, I've written an article around this. Uh, so as you can see, we're gonna do some Twitter setup. We're gonna grab, uh, set up an application on Twitter, and then we write this giant script, and I'll walk through and explain this whole script. Um, I've linked to this tutorial in, uh, the, in the description below. Yeah, so as you can see, I explain it, and then we can do any installations, and we run it. Um, so as you can see, I, it produces a number of scripts, uh, sorry, a number of tweets. Um, and with that, then we just, um, what, what's going to happen here, we just head into the playground, and then we enter the text, and it then produces some um, some new, new text for us. So, uh, for example, in the example I used here, I was using uh, Wealth Theory, which is one of the, which is a Twitter account. Um, they, you know, they talk about things rela related to finances, and then the three tweets that kind of created, or four tweets was like, a financial plan is a good idea for anyone, kind of shows you, and then, uh, yeah, and so that's the whole tutorial, it's going to be pretty quick, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, if you're just here to copy and paste, uh, head over to my website, it's all there, I'm not trying to um, keep anything from you. Uh, if you're looking for a more in-depth open API GPT-3, um, I really haven't gone through it in so much depth that I feel comfortable talking about it. Um, so I'm going to just leave it at this. I'm assuming you have a few uh, prerequisites. Uh, one is a basic knowledge of Python. Another one would be kind of how, a little bit how a REST API works. So in this case, it'd be for uh, the Twitter API. Um, again, I'll kind of explain it, but knowing Python is a good start. I'm also assuming that you have Python on your computer. Um, you've run it before. Um, this isn't to sh sh uh, kind of give you a walkthrough on that. Uh, lastly, um, you should have access to the OpenAPI uh, beta program. I think they're still in beta at this time. Uh, and as well, you should have a Twitter application uh, created. I have a few that I used to use for just uh, development for fun. Um, and then since the uh, Cambridge Analytica stuff a couple of years ago, I think they really restricted it. But since these applications already exist, um, it's easier for the, the, the my applications already exist. Um, but if you're creating an application, you might have a, a few questionnaires and things, things like that to go through. Um, so you might have to hit pause on the video, uh, begin the application process, and then come back to it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our environment here. So open up your terminal. I'm operating on a um, Mac computer. So I'm just going to switch to my desktop. Make this a little bigger so you can see it. I should make a direct directory called... Uh, I'm just going to call it get tweets, and I'm not going to put any spaces in there. And then just uh, get tweets. I'm going to switch it, so I switched into that directory. And I'm going to open up the project in Sublime. You can use whatever editor you'd like. Just say yes. Call this a readme. Uh, next, I want to create uh, get tweets.py. And the last script I'm going to create is .run.sh, which is just a bash script. And this is just so I can load in my, env my environment variables. Just go past all this. I'm doing this just so I don't have to, I can show you the script that I'm going to run. And then to run my script, it'll be just Python 3 and then get tweets.py. To run this script, I'm going to just do bash and then it's going to be dot slash run dot sh. Um, 
Okay, so the next step is going to be setting up the actual consumer key, uh, set up, setting up the Twitter application to get the consumer key and the consumer secret. Um, so uh, you should do that now. I'm going to just pause the video because I don't want to sh share my credentials with you. Um, I know I can just roll them, but just um, I've provided step-by-step -step instructions all on the website here. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we're back. Uh, so at this point, you should have created the app. I'm not going to show you mine, but you should have created the app and then gone into keys and tokens and then gone to computer, uh, consumer API keys, uh, copied these two values into your run.sh script. Um, I just showed you that a second ago. Uh, so now we just do bash run.sh and that should run the Python script. Uh, next, we're just going to actually copy, copy down this whole uh, block of code because I'm going to sit there and explain it through. I'm going to walk through and explain it all. So I'm just paste it in here. Uh, there might be a few issues with my website formatting here. Okay. Now that we've pasted all this code in, I'm going to kind of explain it. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. First, actually, I'm going to start by saying that we should install this package here. Uh, for me, it's going to say it's already installed. Um, I'll explain what this package is. This is a... Um, GitHub package that someone has created. Here it is here on GitHub. Um, it's a simple Python library that helps authenticate. Um, so again, pip install in the package name. This is where this consumer is a key and consumer secret company creates a client and then allows us to like uh, hit the API. So it's, it's going to hit the statuses, for example, here, which is a single tweet and returns that single tweet. Um, so it, it, it does a lot of enveloping for us. It's a great package to use. I, that's why we're using it. Um, so that's that package is installed. Uh, top here, we have a bunch of utility methods. Write to file, append to file, get JSON, and write to JSON. We use a JSON file for each one of the users that we're processing. Uh, it's going to be a cover kind of our local data. So um, you're going to run the script. It's going to grab uh, a maximum of five days worth of tweets, uh, just so you don't hit the API too much. And then as, instead of running it again and then reprocessing the same five pages worth of, worth of tweets. Instead, it's going to find use the last tweet from the fifth page of the last run and use that as a starting point and then grab another five pages. Um, and then when you actually want to combine them all for the, your data set, you can just, uh, you'll have, you know, the whole 10 pages worth because you've just been storing it locally. And that's what these helper methods do. So we're going to start with main here. So we grab, as mentioned, Consumer key, consumer uh, secret. We need those two things to authenticate with Twitter. Uh, next, we could create a new client, an instance of the client object. Uh, we're going to call the uh, Twitter uh, timeline. So we're going to grab a series of tweets. Um, so first, uh, here are the screen names we're processing. I'm using Wealth Theory as the example. Um, I, you could put a whole list of screen names here. I did that originally. One of them was Ray Dalio. Uh, Ray Dalio has a tendency to put like Ray Dalio at the like leading of his all the tweets. So the idea was this would just strip out that Ray Dalio. He always did like at Ray Dalio at the start of all his tweets, and this would just strip it out. But we're only going to use Wealth Theory as our data set for now. So we just printed out that uh, information. Uh, we're going to need to create a folder here called Tweets, um, and that's where all of our local information is going to be stored. So I just create that at the root of my project. What happens is it's a, here, here's the initialized items. But we're going to be building an array of tweet data, uh, the tweets that have been found. So that'd be like the actual tweet content. And then the tweet IDs are the three things we're going to be storing. So the first thing that happens here is it grabs and checks to see if there's been an existing run of this. So that's that page from zero to five. Like, has this been run before? And if it has, uh, get that information. So all the old tweet data, all the old tweet IDs, and grab that last um, tweet that was referenced, and we'll use that as a starting point. But since we haven't, we haven't run ours yet, we don't have that. So the next loop here is it goes from page zero to page five. Twitter has pagination. They don't want you pulling all the tweets constantly. Uh, they also have rate limiting. So you can't just say like, give me from zero to a thousand. They're gonna rate limit you. So that's why we're using this kind of local storage. What we do here is we reference the Twitter API. The status is it grabs the user timeline and we pass in screen name, which is the user we're looking at. 
We don't want to include replies. Um, we don't want retweets. And we want if we have a max ID, we want, we want to use that max ID. We make the API call and we get our tweets back. If there's nothing there, break from it and move on to the next processing. Otherwise, iterate through each one of the sets of tweets. First, grabbing the text of the tweet and then the ID. Uh, do that removing of the screen name. Uh, here, it just double checks to see if it's a, a retweet. Uh, the at is if you're if they're trying to communicate with someone else. These aren't the tweets we want to be using. Um, I remove if they have any links in the, their tweets. Uh, it's also worth removing. Uh, and lastly, I removed it if it was like Happy New Year because that's you know uh, like kind of a holiday celebration thing. It's not the content we want to be um, using as part of our data set. And pretty much we capture all that information and we add it to our our, um, our existing arrays. And then we move a reference to what the last tweet was. Here is just a general printout for uh, rate limiting. We have a sleep just to deal with rate limiting. And then we begin to build this like um, new object called historic data, which will store all this all the information we've captured in case we want to rerun this. We want we can reuse um, the existing data we've already worked with. And it gets stored to that um, JSON path that we had at the top. And then we also start to a text file. And you'll see the two of them run. So let's run this. Uh, we'll run it twice. Um, so as mentioned, I, we have, we've done the installation there. And you've already modified your run.sh to have your consumer key and your consumer secret in there. So let's do bash run. Um, and so I have the Wealth Theory page open here. So what direction is Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin's next substantial move going to be. Um, as you can see, that's the first tweet that's here. Keeps going through. This is the rate limiting. So the reason why we're here and then here is because it's it returned a number of tweets, but they're probably retweets or ads or they have links in them. So this is the only one we're going to use for our data set. Um, so that ran successfully and began to build um, our user's information here. So as you can see, you can see the tweet ID, you can see the text inside that tweet. Um, you can see all the tweet IDs here. You can see the last one, so we can use that as a starting point. Then I got the wealttheory.txt, which is another one where I can, uh, so like there's a few formatting things there, but you might have to fix, but. I'm noticing that I have a few issues with my spacing here. I think he said it's impressive. Yeah. I think this is the Winston Churchill's quote. Anyways, um, so this is the fun formatting issues that you might run into, but I think I'm just going to save that. Um, I'm going to try a different user. Um, I think Paul Graham is at Paul G here. We're going to use his, his uh, profile next. So lots of retweets. So these are all going to get ignored. Um, but like this, for example, like this guy talking about doing jumping with dirt bikes will be one of our First tweets we see of his, so um, I'll go down on my list here and remove wealth theory. I'm going to use Paul G instead. And I'll run his twice just to see the collection then build up. I'm just do bash run. So definitely a lot of like retweets and things like that. And 
then we're just gonna run it one more time. And so you shouldn't see any duplicates here. So Twitter made a mistake in banning SciHub. Um, as you can see, that didn't pop up again. Okay, well, the second run didn't, didn't produce any new tweets, but that's fine. Um, again, now you see the Paul G one here. So same idea, a little bit of formatting errors, but we, we're not gonna actually use that. Um, here's a list of all those tweets. Um, anyways, so that's that's pretty much the way of auto-generating them. So the last part of this is to use the GPT-3 uh, playground just to play around, to just see what they can produce. I'm in the open API, um, Dashboard here, I'm just gonna head to Playground. Um, I'm gonna use the DaVinci model. Uh, and with that, I'm just gonna copy in my Wealth Theory TXT file because I've gone through and formatted it all. Um, I'm just gonna paste it here. Um, I'm gonna hit Submit here. So here are the three that they created. So people who tell you to stop dreaming are usually the ones who, uh, ones not doing anything. Very interesting tweet, not much content to it. I mean, but that's the reality of Twitter. Um, you know, what's something you've always wanted to do but never did? Again, not much content to that, but it follows the same pattern that has already been there. Um, and then yeah, Bitcoin price is gonna keep doing this for a while. It's just a matter of time. Um, again, then they had this like in, incomplete one, which you would just simply ignore. Um, so that's everything for this video. It's been a pretty quick one. Um, really, I would not say this has been a lot of depth. It's more just a little project I put together and I want to share it. Um, if you liked it, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.